Okay guys, today we're going to be doing a video that's actually been a little while in the works and I've been trying to kind of really think about uh, what knives would fit best into this list, so it took me a little while. But uh, today we are going to be talking about the best knives for survival in watery, wet, damp, and overall humid conditions. So. Without any further ado, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon and the Instagram. The support does mean a ton to the channel. Okay, so before we jump into the list strictly, I do want to talk about what I mean by uh, survival knives, specifically for the water. So not every knife in this list mentioned are going to be the best or most well-rounded survival knives, especially the one that we are going to discuss here. This is the Spyderco Aquasalt, but I think a lot of these knives have a lot of good potential. They're tough, they're fairly durable, and they are going to most importantly provide you with a knife that is going to be water resistant and very water and corrosion resistant. So that is essentially what I'm angling at. The other thing that I is going to be present on nearly all of these knives, minus a few of them, is going to be that most will have plastic or rubber handles. And the primary reason why I aim for that being such an important uh, piece or component is the fact that water, broadly speaking, is generally always cold. And what I mean by this is either water itself is either below freezing or cold itself, or it is colder than the ambient temperature. So even in places like the Pacific, uh, you know, places like islands, maybe Hawaii, if you will, you know, it might be, the water might be 70 degrees, but your ambient temperature will likely be 80 to 100. So even though in, so even though in places like that where the water is quite warm, uh, the kind of issue that that brings up is that if you spend any amount of time or any degree of time in the water or around the water, you will get cold. And so having a temperature neutral handle and protect particularly a temperature neutral handle with a high degree of traction is going to mean that even if you are cold, even if you are losing your dexterity, these knives will continue to provide you with good traction so that you can hold them and use them to do things like start fires or do basic tasks, basic survival tasks tasks. In addition, I also wanted to put an emphasis on durability. Of course, there are plenty of folders that could work, but I wanted to put an emphasis on durability so that you could do industrial tasks because sometimes in wet or damp or particularly, uh, you know, ocean-like environments, your access to things like good firewood may not always be a high potential. Now, you might get lucky and you may be in a good area for firewood or for our uh, natural resource harvesting, but if not, being able to do things like batoning is going to be very important as well. So you're not going to see any small knives or any particularly thin knives. I think this is actually the thinnest of them all, and it is fairly thin, I will say. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of the criteria for a lot of these wet environment and kind of uh, water survival knives built for water. Okay, so this is by far not a comprehensive list, but of the knives that I have, I think would make some of the best. Now, ironically, we are, so we are going from largest to smallest and ironically, primarily most expensive to least expensive. So first one starting off on the list is going to be the 3DK AMUK. Now this is an Alaskan design multi-role survival knife and it is built in LMAX, but you can also get this in M390 and even more corrosion resistant steels. However, LMAX is fairly corrosion resistant, it is about as corrosion resistant as the next knife we'll talk about. Um, so it certainly is pretty good as far as corrosion resistance and overall just durability. And uh, LMAX is one of those knives I would, or steels I would consider more of an alloyed steel. It's not particularly stainless, but it is quite stainless and just a general all arounder good performing steel. So like I said, this is the largest of them all. Now the biggest disadvantage with this one and the next one we'll talk about are going to be the fact that it is not fully uh, plastic or rubberized. So there is tang open and exposed that you can see. And of course that will conversely make the knife colder and uh, it'll take more heat out of your hand. However, that is kind of a minimal trade-off uh, when you consider that you are getting a big wide blade. 
that's going to be able to chop. It's going to be able to split wood very easily and very effectively. If you guys have seen my review, I do really like the AMUC. I do wish there were some small tweaks to it, but the AMUC overall is a pretty darn well-rounded survival blade. And of course, once again, it will be very effective in wet environments, being corrosion resistant and being a good performer. And one of my go-to survival knives as a whole is the CRK Pacific. Now I do want to add a quick note here because CRK did reasonably recently release the 4V version of this. If you are looking for specific corrosion resistance, you will want to make sure that you track down the CPM S35V or original version of the Pacific like this one here. That is because the CPM S35VN is going to be significantly or at least noticeably more corrosion resistant than 4V. 4V is tougher than the CPM S35VN, but this one is more corrosion resistant. As the name applies, Pacific, it is designed to be used around water and especially, like I said, in this configuration with this steel, corrosion resistance really shouldn't be a problem. In addition to that, uh, CRK, CRK does a good job at throwing a KG gun coat, which is essentially a type of Cerakote on the blade and it is very hard wearing. Aside from that, uh, there's not a whole lot I can really say about this blade because I have already said so much awesomeness about the CRK Pacific. It is definitely one of my top overall choices for survival knives just because it is so well-rounded, so comfortable, and out of box about the only thing I would recommend to do to make this a more functional blade is do something similar to what I did and that is at minimum square off a bit of the spine so that you can strike ferro rods and uh, aside from that realistically this blade is pretty much ready to go and ready to be an incredible survival knife. Next up on the list, and similar to the CRK Pacific, is going to be the Falkneven A1. Now, the Falkneven series of knives, the F1, the A1, the S1, um, they're all going to be really good knives for wet weather or wet environment survival, because at least in their original uh, in their original manufacturing, they have a triple layer laminate uh, VG10. So you have a VG10 core with two layers of stainless steel laminated to the outside. This not only gives these knives a bit more thickness so that they're better for doing things like chopping and batoning, but it also really adds a layer of corrosion resistance and uh, is definitely really noticeable. And that's why this is my wintertime survival knife is for the added corrosion resistance. In addition to that too, like we're going to start seeing with a lot more of the blades that we're going to be talking about. This is a fully rubberized handle that, as you can see, the tang sticks out of. But aside from that, there's no other contact point between your hand and a piece of cold steel. So, so long as you're holding it on the handle, your hand will not be losing any heat. You won't be feeling that cold or ice cold steel as you hold and use the blade to do things like feather sticking or maybe some more precise tasks. So ultimately, I really like that about this blade. In addition to the rubberized handle, just makes it that much more tacky. So if you're not able to squeeze or hold the knife as hard as you might regularly, it's going to give you a little bit more traction and hopefully the blade will not slip out of your hand. Okay, the next two are pretty darn close in size, but this one just slightly edges it out. And this is going to be the Spyderco Street buoy. Now this is primarily marketed as a kind of fighting knife, but it does have a lot of pros to it when it comes to being a survival knife. It is reasonably thin, but it is still about a five inch blade. It is made out of VG10. So even though this coating is not terribly durable, if you do wear through the coating, the VG10 stainless steel, similar to what's used in the Falkneven uh, A1 and their whole line, is going to be very corrosion resistant. Not super, super corrosion resistant, not quite like a full on stainless steel, but VG10 still is a stainless steel, so it will provide pretty good corrosion resistance, and uh, overall it should be a pretty good performer. Now, unfortunately with this knife and the other knife we're gonna mention next, the tip is a very thin, very fragile, but that does make it good for some things. Uh, it will be very precise, but at the same time too, uh, as far as batoning goes, having a thin tip should not affect its ability to perform in things like batoning. And I have already batoned this blade and used it hard a little bit. So you guys can kind of see, hopefully, by some of the use marks on it. Uh, like I said, the 
the coating is not terribly resistant to use, but the steel itself is stainless, so it should work well. In addition, another thing that makes the street buoy kind of nice for survival is that it is very lightweight and very, very minimal profile. So even with its sheath, its blade is very thin and very easy to carry. So that makes it a realistic option or maybe more realistic option than other choices out there. In addition to that too, similar to other knives we're gonna mention, it is of course a fully plastic handle. The tang is about three quarters, so it does not stick out, but just because it's not a true full tang does not necessarily make it weak or make it less strong. It just means that it does not have a true full tang. So there's also some rubberized portions in the handle that give it a little bit extra traction if your hand gets cold and you need that little bit of extra grip. So overall, the handle is definitely really comfortable and once again, very temperature neutral. Okay, next one, next one up on the list and another Spyderco is going to be the Spyderco Aquasalt. And the Aquasalt is probably one that I would choose slightly over the Street Buoy, though the Street Buoy is a little bit bigger in overall size. The H1 steel that the Aquasalt uses means that it is going to be very, very corrosion resistant and probably the most corrosion resistant of all the knives on the list. And so, so that is a huge pro for the aqua salts. Now, one of the disadvantages is, like I mentioned at the intro of the video, this is also the thinnest blade. So I'll bring back the already pretty thin um, street buoy. And you can see that the street buoy is an eighth of an inch thick, and this is still a bit thinner than that. So this is probably like one tenth of an inch thick, if that is one eighth of an inch thick. So it is pretty thin, but it is still very durable and very tough. The other nice thing about the Aqua Salt is it has a very nice handle. It has similar uh, kind of volcano grip to a lot of the knives like the Delica or the Endura series of blades. So as you guys can see there, it is super, super grippy. And I threw some extra orange on this blade. I threw an orange lanyard on here and a couple hits of orange tape so that I can more easily identify it because I'd say really the only disadvantage to this blade being an aquatic blade or a uh, blade that's meant to be used around water is that it is all black. So if you need that all black kind of tactical-esque look, then that's great. But with a lot of people, myself included, that this is more of a survival knife, I want to be able to identify the knife easily and quickly. So that's why I added the extra bits of orange to help the uh, knife kind of pop out or stand out against backgrounds. So that's what I did. But aside from that, it is a really solid blade. Once again, it is made out of H1. So it is going to be super, super corrosion resistant and do expect me to do a little bit more with this knife and talk a little bit more about setups when it comes to aquatic or wet weather or wet environment survival blades. So definitely not done. This, this video is definitely not the last time you'll be seeing the H1 Aqua Salt. Okay, so moving down the list a little bit, we're gonna talk about the Gerber Prodigy. Now the Gerber Prodigy is on here because once again, it is a stainless steel or semi-stainless steel. The 420 HC that is used in this blade is not my favorite and will still definitely rust in wet environments. So do be mindful of that. That being said, it is not horrible and it is certainly not the end of the world. It, does have some good pros going for it as well. So the steel is probably its greatest drawback, but it does have a really nice handle that is of course, once again, fully plasticized with rubber uh, through pretty much the whole portion of the handle. So you are getting really good grip. You're getting a very comfortable and once again, reasonably temperature neutral handle. You do also have a bit of the tang protruding. So this blade is full tang, but it is slightly dubious how wide the tang is once it is inside the handle. But overall, it is tough. I've pounded on this blade and tried to break it before. So it is certainly durable, even though it may not look like the most durable full tang blade. And it is made out of a pretty thick piece of steel. So it should be able to handle pretty industrial tasks. Overall, if you're looking for a more budget blade, that's still pretty good for wet environments. Wouldn't recommend necessarily taking this one into salt water because it will definitely not fare well. Unlike the H1 Aqua Salt, um, this one will not fare well in salt water, but in wet environments, it should do okay. And it will be a reasonably budget blade that is thick and kind of tanky and can take a lot of damage, so to speak. So, 
that is something to keep in mind and once again too should be pretty good for wet and cold environments with its handle okay so that is the gerber prodigy now let's wind it up with the last two okay stepping it up or stepping it down a little bit is going to be the mora kanzbul and the mora kanzbul i think is a pretty darn good one for the list as well because it is made out of 12 c 27 n sandvik so similar to the 420 hc though i think a little bit better in edge retention and corrosion resistance this is not going to be like an h1 steel uh you know you do have to keep in mind or you do have to uh you do have to keep corrosion in mind with this steel, but once again, you're talking about more budget offerings. The con spool is right around $35 to $40, and it's going to be reasonably thin. Actually, maybe maybe thinner. Wow, okay, it's it's actually just slightly thinner than the Aqua Salt. So thinnest one on the list. Uh, that being said, once again, similar to the Aqua Salt, I have batoned this one and put it through its paces. It is just fine. Um, it is thinner. It's not optimal to use for things like baton but if you have to you can process wood through batoning with this blade though definitely keep in mind uh, any type of lateral movement on the tip may break it because the tip is extra extra thin that being said it is also kind of a pro because it does make the tip and the belly of the blade a very very slicey and very precise so those are some pros to you know it being so thin but overall once again very similar to the prodigy you have a pretty much fully rubberized handle with some hard plastic on the kind of interior portion of the handle so it's going to be very temperature neutral very grippy and it is not going to be terribly cold so this is a pretty good option especially for budget offerings you know when you do start to talk about when you do start talking about budget offerings when it comes to stainless blades a lot of your performance does start to wane and you start to lose you know either corrosion resistance or thickness or ability because as you make a blade uh, smaller and less or as you make a blade smaller and or as you make a blade more budget friendly you lose a lot of the properties in stainless steels because stainless steels similar to alloys are just very expensive to make and they're very hard to make well things like h1 uh, you know is a nitrogen steel so it replaces the carbon in the blade with nitrogen so that's what makes it so corrosion resistant but also very expensive to make so when it comes down to it you know if you do want quality uh corrosion resistant blades or wet environment blades you will usually have to pay for them okay the last one and not necessarily the most budget blade on the list but it just the smallest on the list is the falcon even f1 the falcon even f1 very similar to the falcon even a1 we talked about earlier just much smaller is a very tough very resilient small blade and this is probably the smallest i would go for survival and even still this is probably a little bit small for my personal choice in survival because you're dealing with an under four inch blade length that being said it is still a very durable knife you guys have probably seen other videos on the channel where i've you know put this up against different uh, survival knives like the lmf2 and the tip strength on this thing even though you wouldn't necessarily think so is very strong i think pre predominantly due to the laminated nature of the steel of course once again just like the a1 this is a triple layer laminate vg10 so you have a stainless steel on the core and it's sandwiched by two even more stainless pieces of steel so it is going to be a very rust resistant blade and overall once again definitely not cheap but coming in at around you know 120 to 140 dollars it's going to be in the same price range as the aqua salt but is going to have very similar performance i'd say the biggest thing that the f1 has going for it is the fact that it is a little bit thicker a little bit more tanky than the aqua salt so you can use it harder but uh, aside from that you know it's going to have pretty similar performance once again fully rubberized handle with the tang protruding out of the back but that shouldn't be an issue as far as uh, handling it in cold weather or cold environments so overall these are definitely really good choices for operating in weather that is suboptimal you know in very wet environments in very cold environments a lot of these steels and handles will overall perform very well because they're not going to leach you know heat out of your hand because you're holding on to a cold you know block of steel uh, unfortunately like i said the two most expensive options are ironically not the most optimal but uh, depending on what your needs are any of these blades should suit your should suit most of your needs once again if you're going with specific salt 
saltwater environments, I would recommend, you know, really going with H1 or really going with one of the triple layer laminate VG10s because those are gonna be the most rust resistant of all the steels mentioned. And as well, you know, do be prepared to spend money on a proper stainless blade. Stainless steels, once again, are not cheap. They are harder to make, harder to produce well, and there are fewer companies out there making, you know, solid quality survival knives for aquatic environments. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.